How's it going, everybody? Happy Thanksgiving. This is Big Day Dave, and this is the second live stream post episode two. A little bit of an impromptu stream. Wasn't planning on hopping on today, but, <clears throat> excuse me, but decided to hop on here, get a little bit of work done. Had a little bit of downtime in between, uh, you know, getting all the things ready for the big meal today. Hopefully, everybody out there is having a fantastic day. If you are out there in the chat, go ahead and let me know that you're out there, because unfortunately YouTube doesn't have uh, any sort of way for me to know who's there unless you say something in the chat. So we are going to go ahead and just get started right away. Normally we kind of give a few minutes to see if anybody comes and joins us, but the time that I have for today is rather limited, so... We're going to make the most of it. So first things first, let's go ahead. I've got a sewing contract right here. And that's the wait for that. So let's uh, get a bag of seeds. Let's see. I think. Uh, no, I don't want that. I want these down here. Yeah, multi-crop. There we go. Oh, I didn't even realize there's a big old dually in the back. Now let's see, where is this one going? This is going to... <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Uh, 132. 130... Oh, right across the street. Sweet. Oh, come on. Come on, I just want my weight. There we go. So 132 is there. Oh, and there's the there's the seed right over there. What am I planting? Uh, canola. There it goes. Perfect. So because it's Thanksgiving and, you know, everything that's going on around here, getting ready for, you know, people to come over, I may have to hop off rather quickly. So if that's the case, I will, you know, give as much of a warning as possible before just signing off. But just a, uh, just a heads up that is definitely within the cards. So let's see, I think, and this big old dually is really be unwieldy. Oh no. Um, well, let's go through here. Open this up. So I hope everybody out there is having a fantastic holiday so far been uh, really fantastic over here got the day off of work so spent most of the morning kind of hanging out relaxing and spending time with the family which is amazing absolutely love it been cooking all day been up since about i don't know 7 seven thirty, just cooking up a storm with the with the missus I tell you what, that is the one thing about this map that's really, I don't want to say that, that it upsets me or anything, but it is definitely really difficult to, to deal with sometimes, is the type of equipment that you're given for contracts. So you've got this big old dually uh, tractor here, and you're expected to get down the roads with a dually. Like, if I had cars coming in the other lane, I, it just would not have happened. You know, so I don't know how people, like, like, I don't imagine too many people in real life in Ireland, maybe within certain regions of Ireland, because this is a map that's based in Ireland, but, but specifically to this map, I don't see why you would have a dually in this region. 
and just some of the other equipment that's given out, uh, as I mentioned in the last stream, just doesn't, uh, doesn't add up to what you're expected to do with it. So it's one of those that's kind of a kind of a nuisance, kind of uh, a pain. But you know, as I would say quite often in the last Let's Play series on Hills of Tuscany, it's just a minor nuisance. It's not something that's going to be you know world-ending kind of thing. Just just an annoyance. Because there's actually a pretty decent buffer around the field here, we're going to go ahead and engage the worker and let them get going. Okay, so what I can do here, this will actually work out very nicely. I can hook this up on the front. So the tether's in the front, windrow will be in the back. And now this is going to 69, which is, okay. So I gotta go to the main kind of farm on the, oh wow, that, uh, that trailer just sitting on the, sitting on the uh, fence there, that's not good. See, so the driveway should be up here a little ways. Go ahead and open up the map so I know where I'm going. Okay. Oh, easy. Ooh, I had to mute the mic there. I just sneezed. All right. So you got to get through the farm. Looks like it's just north of the farm here. Here, let's stop right here. I'm going to figure out where to go. So it looks like... Nope. Can't get in through that side. I have to get over here. Okay, so cut through here, in and around. Okay. And there we go. Perfect. So I'm going to leave this equipment and the tractor right here. That's kind of a bummer. Uh, it might that time. Yeah, so it might have been just that little corner right there it's not uh, not agreeing with. Alright, so we're gonna bring the big old mower here. Oh, they're stopped for the for the worker. Okay. I was sitting there confused for a second. It's like, why, why is the traffic just stopped? That doesn't make sense. And then it dawned on me, oh, that's right, you got a worker going there. I don't know why, it just, I have something stuck in my throat and I'm having to hit the mic and try to remove it. There we go. Now, we can get to mowing. We have this on wide spreading right now, but we're gonna wanna windrow this in at first. We'll, we'll spread it back out once we do the tedding, but we'll be able to get this all kinda picked up relatively quickly. Oops, 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 there's 
fence right there. There you go. Now we just follow the tracks. And we're on the back side. There we go. Now the great thing about this mower here, the absolute best, is that you can fast farm with it. And we're going to swath. So what you do is you lower it down by pressing the left bumper and B for Xbox. I think it's circle for PlayStation. And then you hold the left bumper while continuing to hold it. Double tap the A button for Xbox or the X button on PlayStation. And you just boom, boom, really fast, two hits. And it just raises it just enough to where it thinks that it's actually off the ground, but it's still mowing. Fire this up and watch this. We'll be able to get up to the maximum speed of the mower rather than the limited working speed. Yeah, 26 miles an hour while mowing. There we go. Oh, absolutely love it. Makes makes mowing so much easier. So much faster. You can just zip right on through, but it only works with an actual person. It doesn't work with a AI worker. So the moment you engage the AI worker, they reset and they start going the normal working speed. Oops, there we go. We're just going to make another headland on the outer periphery here. And once we're done with that, we'll be able to just turn the worker loose and let them finish up. And then we can focus on the last contract we have, which is a harvesting contract. I believe it was for canola, if I'm not mistaken. go. I think. Yeah, look at that. That'll work out perfectly. Just raise up. Oops. Yeah, I kind of thought that might be an issue. Now, oh yeah, that's looking good. That's looking real good. That's working just fine. Uh, let's go back to here. Let's grab this Veltra. There we go. Now this is... Harvesting 82. Oops, where's 82? Oh, that's all. Oh, wow, that's way up there. Uh, I need to figure out how to get there. I have a feeling it's going to be like back here. Okay, it's right this field here. So, this road. This road. This road. This goes all the way out to here to the main road. Okay, cool. Alright, and I actually just got flagged, so 
Give me one second, I'll be right back.
so sorry about that. Just getting everything all situated again. Like I said, if you're out there in the chat, go ahead and give yourself a shout out. Let me know that you're there. I don't know how many people are going to show up to the stream just because of how, uh, well, with the holiday and all that. But, like I said, if you're out there, give yourself a shout out. Let me know that you're there. As I mentioned before, you know, it being the holidays, it being Thanksgiving, uh, my wife may be asking for my help every once in a while. So if I have to kind of duck in and out, I apologize for that right up front. So now we're going to take this uh, wagon up that field. Actually, I don't even have to take Why am I doing that? What am I doing? No sense in me taking it up there. Go right there. There we go. Ooh, that's going to be a tight fit. We're going to have to probably bump it. Uh, well, yeah. There we go. Ooh, I was afraid of that. Hmm. Alright, the only way I can think of to fix this... Oh my goodness. It's like bumper cars up in here. Whoa! Holy smokes! Um... Yeehaw! Nope, wrong. I just want to get this onto the trailer. I'm not going to sit here and make it perfect. Oh no, is this one of those trailers that doesn't actually auto lock it? It is too, isn't it? Well, that's a bummer. That kind of ruined my plans. There's like one trailer specifically, and it must be this one, where it doesn't actually engage in the auto-locking script, it just locks it down. So it's a rather nuisance, but not a big deal, it is what it is. There we go. Now, now we're making our way out there. Let's see, so if I remember right, I have to... Come to this farm, make a left into it, and come down this side road. Oh, um... Well, that's a problem. So we'll just follow behind. Now that I kind of have a person who should know the way. And as I mentioned before on several streams now, th this is this is another example of equipment that doesn't fit the scheme of the map. So this is a monster class harvester with a big, wide header for it. And when we get to the field, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. There is no realistic way to be able to get this set of equipment into the field. Um, is my AI worker just driving through somebody? They are too. They are just driving through somebody's field. How rude. 
I mean, I just clicked the corner of the other person's field, but at least I tried. <laughs> Look at that. They're just literally just... Oh. But you can see what I'm talking about. This set of equipment is not intended to be back here. It's just not. There's no way that you, if you were playing this, you know, as realistic, as true to life as possible, there's no way you'd get this set of equipment back here with the header hooked up and ready to go. Like, even, like, coming through this opening here, like, you can see... I have to be so far off the path to be able to just get to this point. And if there was one of those posts right there, like look at the post that's inside the hedges right here. If this was any further out towards me, I would have no way of being able to get in here with this set of equipment. But we got back here. We are not playing true to life. We're just going about doing what we can do. There we go. All right, working out very nicely. Check on something really fast. Okay, there we go. Perfect. So yeah, we're just uh, going through. We're gonna harvest this field. We're gonna make a at least one pass on the headland, maybe a second. Yeah, I'm thinking probably two, just because it's not gonna give us a huge buffer, and likely the worker when we set them off will just skip a bunch of spots if I don't do a second pass, so I'll probably do two passes. That'll, that'll just give me just enough of a buffer not to have to worry about babysitting them. But for anybody who's familiar with the AI in this game, oof, you basically gotta babysit them no matter what you do. So as I mentioned before, anybody out there, go ahead and give yourself a shout out in the chat. Let me know that you're there. Hope you're having a fantastic Thanksgiving so far. Came on to do a little bit of an impromptu uh, stream. Wasn't planning on hopping on, but it was one of those I had some time to, to be able to kick back and relax before all the uh, hustle and bustle starts to happen. And needed to be able to uh, make a little bit of extra money so this uh, works out really good I can get on here and do a bunch of contracts you know until company starts showing up and once company starts showing up then I can go ahead and hop off and you know, enjoy the rest of the holiday kind of thing but like I said I hope you and yours are having a fantastic Thanksgiving so far for those uh, of us in America who celebrate And anybody else from around the world, it's just another day to you. And I hope you're having a fantastic one. Let's see. Go ahead and... Oops, there we go. Do I want to do two, two headlands? I, uh, I don't know if I need to or not. If I'm going in... Actually, you know what? What am I thinking? That's kind of... I don't have to do two headlands. I can just two, two at either end. Yeah, see, look at that. That should give me more than enough space here on this end. I can then go down the other end on this side. 
every once in a while I get just a Mr. Smarty Pants moment where I'm like, ooh, yeah. This'll work. And I, I'm pretty sure this'll work just fine. I don't see why it wouldn't. I just need the ends at which I'm going to be turning around to have enough space. I don't necessarily have to have an entire ring around the field. This this being a square field, I just need both ends wide enough for me to turn around in. Or at least the worker to turn around in. Works out nicely. I'm happy. I am happy. Let's go ahead and get that little scraggly bit right here. like so. And fire up a worker in this direction. I'll leave a little bit of an overhang in case I wasn't perfectly straight coming down the, the first pass here. With the worker now going, that'll keep me honest and true. gather up all the little bits that I miss with the worker. Oh, and I'm getting flagged down one more time. Give me just one more second. Be right back. So sorry about that. I am back. Let's see. Let do, 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 do. Where did that screen go? There it is. Perfect. I think let me find where I'm at here. Uh, we need this. And oh, yeah, I got a couple of little stragglers. Let's go ahead and just hit these up real quick because why not? Every little bit helps. I'll just throw this right over here. Okay. So now... Now what I can do is... Well, you don't do the same thing. I'll just pull this right in here. Out of my way. Drop that there. And then... Perfect. Now from here, let's turn this into hay. Alright, look at that. Yeah, so I know that the windrowing was kind of not necessary, especially because it would just kind of flick it out like it's doing right here. But that's okay because it at least brings the grass that I cut from the most outer periphery back into the field. Um, instead of potentially flicking it out beyond the reach of the windrower that I have. So this works out just fine, in my opinion. With the windrower, I should be able to just kind of... Uh-oh. Oh, man. That was silly. I completely forgot about the... About the harvester going in this direction. Let's bring this over here. Let's 
bring this over here. And then we'll unload. Just like so. And then I'll just take the harvester up and down this way so I can... I'm actually shocked that I was able to not miss out on some product. The worker actually did a good job. You know, I need to knock on wood or something because... Oof, I feel like now they kind of give them a compliment and I'm going to have to, you know, atone for saying something good about him and he's going to sit there and punish me by doing everything else wrong. Let's kick this back in, just like so. So we're just gonna create enough space on this end to where all all I have to worry about after this is sending the worker back and forth. And I won't have to worry about, you know, hopefully won't have to worry about keeping an eye on them and oops, 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 oops. I can't worry about keeping an eye on myself apparently. There we go, that's better. Perfect. Look at that. And then once we get to this end, we'll turn around and start heading in the opposite direction. And then we'll pick up where we left off at the other end of the field there. That way, the worker will be able to just kind of do what they need to do. So something like this. go look at that you know see now that I have both these ends at two header widths apart from the border shouldn't have any issues should be more than more than enough for the AI to, to handle I'm happy 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 as some people would say. And seems that the trailer is right there, I might as well unload what I have in the harvester here. And then I can just let them carry on uninterrupted. There we go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, I'll unload the rest of this. And then in the words of Jeremy Clarkson, power! There we go. Let's see, yeah, this should be, this should be just fine. Do a little bit of an overhang just to make sure we catch everything. There we go. Drop the header down. And we're off. Perfect. And let's backtrack. Alright, that's still going. Now, see, the nice thing about bringing both sets of equipment out here is I don't have to run up to the shop to go grab the windrower after this. I can just go into that other field, pick it up, and then start to work on that. I won't have to sit here and, you know, try and fight with, you know, with the traffic, try and fight with the terrain and all that stuff. I can just do the next job kind of thing. 
which if you can if you can kind of figure out those little tips and tricks and how to do as few either as few passes as possible either in the field or as few trips as possible every time you save a trip every time you save a pass is time that you're saving on the back end so i can't hook up you know multiple multiple pieces of equipment and do this in one pass but i now don't have to go to the to the store or back to the store in order to pick up that set of equipment so i'm saving time every single time you can do that is very well worth it and like i said we don't have to be nice and clean and with all this stuff we can just kind of let it fly wherever it goes at this point Like I said, the reason I wanted to do the windrows in the first place was to make sure that we weren't just uh, throwing all the product, all the grass, now hay, out so far that the windrower wasn't able to reach it and pull it back in. So this actually works out far better. And you know what? I might as well get two of these in one pass. Yeah, see, look at that. This uh, tether is wide enough to where I can do this in one pass. Any time, every single time that you can save extra steps. That is the best way to maximize your time and to get things done just that much faster. You know, like... I have at the far left side the wind row that you know I'm kind of following but I'm so far over that I'm kind of flicking out some of this extra uh, going in this direction so that's just that little bit less that I won't have to do on the next pass all right now we can set off a worker and I think they'll just sit there and go back and forth and should be okay from here. So let's do, oops, is this all done? It is all done. Yes, completed. Sweet. Collect. Let's see. Yeah, it's about half there. Sweet, it's almost seven grand for that contract. Cole, hey, how's it going? Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. Thanks for joining us for this uh, impromptu Thanksgiving stream. Like I said, I wasn't, uh, wasn't planning on hopping on today, but had a little bit of downtime, so decided to hop on and get some work done around the farm. this and make sure that they can get as much product off the field as possible. We're definitely going to have to make a delivery before the harvester's done. Alright, perfect. What's that? Oh yeah, look at that. That's working out perfect. I am thrilled about that. Let's see. Uh, yeah, so these are all working out just fine. We'll let the harvester go for a little while. We'll keep an eye on this just to make sure it's doing what I expect it to. Let's see. So, Cole, are you having a good day so far? I don't know if you celebrate uh, Thanksgiving or not, but if so, are you having a good Thanksgiving? Yeah, that's working out really good. I'm happy about this. 
I found that sometimes the uh, when wind rowing, or I'm sorry, when tedding, especially when the swaths are rowed so close uh, like they are here, that the worker can get confused and miss out on some of the product because it doesn't actually recognize that there's some product on the floor because it'll just, it won't, uh, it'll keep kind of scooting over and over and over until there's nothing directly in front of the tether. So it's one of those that I kind of want to keep an eye on it, make sure it's not going to goof around here in a few more rows. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, Cole says, uh, yes, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Really looking forward to the to the nice meal that's coming up here pretty soon. My wife and I have been working hard all morning to get everything all prepped and ready to go. She's still in the kitchen doing her thing. Uh, made a beautiful turkey, some ham, got some, uh, I don't know if they're technically candy yams or not. I think that's what they're called. Um, but basically just uh, really sweet, uh, sweet potatoes. What else have we got going on? We've got some uh, some green beans, some mashed potatoes, gravy. We've got um, let's see. Oh, I made some homemade cranberry uh, homemade cranberry dressing. Um, yeah, the whole nine yards. We're, we're we're really doing it up this year, as we tend to every year. So really kind of uh, looking forward to it. Let's see. Jody, hey, how's it going? Uh, doing fantastic. It says, uh, how's your day been? Fantastic. Really looking forward to the Thanksgiving meal. Yeah, see how I'm kind of sliding out you know, further and further. Let's go ahead and just reset them. Uh, let's see. Cole says, finished up getting the new sled ready. And hopped on, and and you were screwed. Hey, that's awesome. Glad that uh, glad you're able to find me. Like I said, this is kind of an impromptu stream. Was not planning on hopping on, but it worked out to where uh, had a little bit of free time. So, you know, gonna get some work done while I can, and be able to, uh, you know. I might get interrupted every once in a while uh, if my wife needs some help or anything like that, but uh, I th I'm thinking about 3 o'clock, uh, maybe 2.30, 3 o'clock is when uh, you know we're going to have company and everything kind of show up, so likely I'll have to hop off around that time. So we got a little bit longer before you know I have to hop off. But uh, Jody, yeah, my day's going fantastic. I haven't had Excellent Thanksgiving. Watch the watch the parade for a little while this morning uh, with the wife and kid, and then uh, been cooking all morning with her. So it's just been fantastic day. How about yourself? You having a good day so far? Good turkey day. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Absolutely. Three more rows. Yeah, let's just go ahead and do this ourselves. It's not. Let's not waste time with the the turning around. That's something else I need to install here too. It just dawned on me. I don't have a uh, one of those RDK stations. I need to install that to get that little uh, efficiency bonus for the workers. I think it's like an eleven or I think it's eleven to fourteen percent efficiency boost. You know, they they'll won't think as long in the turns and all that stuff when they're turning around. Um, and they've got some real cheap ones too that you can install, so it's it's really worth it, especially if you tend to use workers a lot. Uh, again, like I was saying earlier, every every second that you can save is a second that you pick up on the back end kind of thing, and. Anytime you can do something just a little bit more efficiently just means that you got more time to do something else. And especially in this game, I mean, with as much time that can be wasted doing a single job on this, you know, saving every second really helps. Okay, let's flip that out with 
over there. I did not line that up as well as I thought I did. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. So, Cole, you got the you got the new sled all hooked up and ready to go. Have you uh, have you had enough snow where you could actually like get on and ride it yet? Hey, Cavalier Roy, how's it going? Uh, says, hey, bud, uh, for once I catch you on your streams and can't stop long, go figure. Oh, that's a bummer. Well, hey, glad you are able to stop by, and hey, I'm on your map here. Uh, started a new series on uh, Maypole Farm. But uh, hope you're having a fantastic day so far. Let's see. Uh, oh, that swaths to the left. Can we change it? Yeah, middle. I thought we could do the middle. Let's pull this back out real quick. Perfect. Look at that. Uh, no snow yet, but it is in the forecast around mid-December. Oh, nice. El Nino doesn't help the winters. Oh, yeah, no, that's... Uh, it tends to mess up everything up, uh, up in the north. I know around here they're calling for it to be... Uh, cooler than normal so waiting to see how that kind of works out ooh, ooh, ooh. easy 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 don't don't get out of the way uh let's see cavalier roy says i'm good thanks how are you finding the map i absolutely love this map cavalier roy you did an amazing job on this one um yeah I, i've said many many times before this and i'll go ahead and say it again for the stream that this is by far one of the most modular maps that I have ever been on, and I absolutely love that about this map. The ability to be able to kind of pick and choose how you adjust the entirety of the farms, the landscape, just everything, is just a really cool feature and something that I personally really appreciate. Um, and I love the the ability to knock down like the hedges and cut down the uh, fence borders around the around the pens and pastures and stuff like that just yeah fantastic map absolutely love it but right now we're only uh, two episodes in this is now the third live stream that we've done uh, for the series so I don't know how familiar you are with the content or how much how deeply you follow the channel but the live streams is really kind of the Proof of work uh, for for the Let's Play series. So the Let's Play is more of the kind of story-driven portion of things, to where this is kind of the kick back, relax, and do work kind of thing. And it kind of started as a response to the stories that creators like Mr. Sealy P would say about how. Uh, people would always accuse him to pour in money and whatnot. So this is just kind of the, you know, like I said, the proof of work. The, what is going on? Oh, I see. I'm sorry if that got picked up in the audio in the background there. We have uh, some Yahoo on a, on a crotch rocket that's thinking that our street is, you know, his personal racetrack. It is what it is, not a huge deal. Let's see, let me catch up with the chat just real fast. Um, let's see. Jody says, uh, how's your day going, Cole? Uh, Cole says, pretty good, how about you? Jody says, do uh, you have a good Thanksgiving with your family? Cole says, yep, still having a few things ready, or getting a few things ready. Uh, Kevlar Roy says, thank you. The map does have an update with Giants, depending on what Giants plans are for the next year. This is as it stands, the final update. Oh, jeez. Sorry about that if that got picked up again. I don't know what this Yahoo is thinking. Oh, looking forward to see what the update is. Uh, the update is save game compatible. Oh, excellent. That's awesome, awesome. Uh, are you able to kind of let us know what... Uh, what some of the updates might be or I mean it's it's one of those if you if you either don't want to or can't I understand let's see Jody said this is an awesome map Cavalier says thank you 
And Jody says, I love the map makers that make real good maps like this. Yes, absolutely. You know, and I, and I actually did a, a map tour just the other day um, where I, I, I wasn't uh, too thrilled about the, the map itself. But just kind of piggybacking off of what Jody's saying there, I'm greatly appreciative of every single map maker out there. They go out of their way to make, you know, content like this where it gives us the ability to just expand and enjoy the game beyond what is stock so yeah every single map maker regardless of how i feel about the map i greatly appreciate every single person who takes the time and the dedication um after talking to silver eagle and, and other map makers there's some maps out there that take you know years of creating and and time to to publish you know and and cavalier if you don't mind me asking you uh in I don't know how you want me to address you if you prefer Cavalier or Roy or, or whatever, uh, you know, feel free to let me know. But uh, how long did this map in particular take you to make, kind of start to finish? I'm just, like I said, just curious because, you know, any chance I get to, you know, actually talk live with a map maker, um, you know, I don't want to say it kind of turns into an interview, but one of those that anytime I can get some kind of uh, insider information or behind the scenes, I think it's really fascinating. And, uh, you know, certainly something that uh, personally fascinates me. You know, I really would love to know, you know, more personally, like on how to create maps and whatnot, because I think it's a very interesting, you know, thing to do. Let's see, let me catch up with what everyone's saying so far. We've got, uh, Cavalier says, give me a sec, I'll post the change. Oh, fantastic. Uh, says, new production. Ooh, love it when there's new productions. Diesel, dough, donuts, pancakes, uh, pasteurized milk, sandwiches, soybeans, soybean oil, soybean milk. Wow, that's one massive of an update just in that alone. Yeast, yogurt, and more. Ooh. New textures of the following crops, wheats, barley, cotton, grass, grass uh, meadow grass, maize. You know what? That's something that I could ask you. Also, what is the difference between meadow grass and just regular grass? I, I, I never understood the difference and would love to be able to know what that is. Let's see. Excuse me one second. I got a cough. Ooh, sorry about that. So let's see, where was I? Farm buildings, uh, barns, etc., are all there regardless of the game difficulty. However, the remove them now costs you money. Ooh, okay, nice. I think you did that in another one of your maps, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let's see, solid fertilizer tank now allow you to buy solid fertilizer and lime. Oh, that yeah, this is a very similar to the change logs that were in uh, your your previous uh, map. I forget what the map's called. Liquid fertilizer tank now allows you to buy liquid fertilizer and herbicide. Nice. Can be stored together. Seed and mineral feed tank will now allow you to buy both the store together. Nice. Uh, production modification. Bread requires dough, yeast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I absolutely love this. I cannot wait for this to get published. Uh, I hope Giants really kind of puts the boogie on it and... Let's see, production modification. Sugar mill now gives you the production of yeast. Awesome. Uh, Sawmill uh, is now a building you can delete after purchasing, allowing you to use the land for other reasons. Awesome. Uh, BGA will now give out output of methane, which can be set to store, sell, or distribute. BGA will also now has sugar beet, potatoes, straw as inputs, which produce methane, electric charge, and digestate. However, straw will not produce digestate. Production diesel requires sunflower oil, canola oil, soybean oil, water, and methane, which gives, which can then be used to, on your farm or sold. Uh, silos are no longer mul oh no longer multifruit. They will now be only accept the following: wheat, barley, canola, maize, sorghum, oats, sh sunflowers, potatoes, sugar beets, sugar beet cuts, uh, sugar cane. Before updating the map. 
Make sure that no other fruit types are present in the silos. Ooh, I'm going to have to remember that. Uh, BGA can now be removed after purchase. Same with the sawmill. Uh, sell points updated to work with fill types added from the premium DLC. Oh, that's excellent. Roy, thank you so much for, uh, for letting us know that. That is fantastic. I'm looking forward to that. Now I'm gonna have to think of ways on how to how to store some of the crops because one I didn't see in there was the uh, the premium expansion uh, products. So like parsnips, I actually have like thirty, well no, probably like twenty thousand liters worth of parsnips right now. So I'll have to figure out a way to store those somewhere else. I'll probably have to store them loose for now and put them out. Uh, another time oh you know what this kind of gives me a good opportunity to also ask you Roy. let me uh, let me ask you this so I don't know if uh, if the map makers like yourself have to uh, like actually put in the equipment that's available for contracts but while I've got you on here, um, this set of equipment, I don't know if this is something that you can do or, or can't do. I don't know. But you can see how it gives you the truck from the, uh, what is that, the Hay and Forage DLC. Uh, one thing I notice is that the only front, th uh, the only three-point link that's on that is a front three-point link. There is no rear three-point link. So you can use it for mowing, which is fine, but this being uh, for silage, the wind rower uh, won't work and the baler won't work. Um, I think you could potentially use the wrapper, but those two sets of equipment, because you can't move forward with either one of them, you'd almost have to drive in reverse is what I was uh, talking about on one of my last streams. Um, I don't know if that's something that you have any influence over or not. Um, but just wanted to kind of point out something like that, that that was, uh, you know, something that popped up. Let's see. Let me catch up here. Uh, hopefully the map goes through all the testing and drops tomorrow and or next week. Oh, that's awesome. I would love for that to come out tomorrow. I'm actually getting ready to go on vacation. Um, what is it? Saturday. So I'd love for that to come out tomorrow so I can do the change logs for the update. Uh, and then lastly, uh, no we don't, but we can modify them like Disturb Simulation did for me with Glenn Lathan. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't sure if, uh, if you're able to kind of do anything about that. I didn't know if it was just kind of whatever Giants kind of throws in there is kind of their basic scripting or not, but let's see. Like I said, it's not a, it's not a huge deal. I can, you know, obviously I can compensate by leasing a trailer or leasing a set of equipment that can compensate for, you know, the lack of the three point link. It's not a huge issue. go we are just about done with the windrowing here oh man now now you got me really excited I'm looking forward to that update like I said that was it was Glenn Lathan that uh, that you pushed out that uh, that same change log for that was the map that I remembered it from. Yeah, I was really, I was really thrilled about that when that uh, came out for that map. There we go. And let's get one quick push in from here. Oh, I didn't mean to grab all that. That's all right. Perfect. Fold that away. And I may have missed it in that kind of uh, 
barrage of messages there, Cavalier. But uh, like I said, uh, roughly how long did this map take you to to kind of start from start to finish? Now, how long did it make you, uh, or how long did it take you to finish this? Because, uh, like I said, I was talking to Silver Eagle. A seal, blah, 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 I can talk, I swear. Uh, I was talking to Silver Eagle, who made. Um, Oh goodness, what was that map called? Not Spruce Mountain. Anyways, um, he said that it took him over over a year to get it from start to finish. But that was he said that was also including the updates uh, and whatnot. So just one of those I, I'm really curious about because it's one of those a lot of these maps are just an absolute labor of love you know to, to be able to dedicate any amount of time to this because as far as i'm aware there's no like compensation mechanism for map makers it's just kind of the, the love for the game now as far as i'm aware there may be some avenues of compensation i'm not again i'm not 100 percent certain about that but it, it's one of those that for the most part people are doing this because they love the game and they want to have a map out there that has their kind of stamp on it their their kind of uh their flair their kind of personality kind of built into the map so it's one of those that as a uh as a player of the game i really adore um you know when the when map makers like yourself and others come out and do this that they'll you know take the time to you know however long short whatever that they'll take the time to actually do this because you know it's just one more map out there that you know gives us the opportunity to just make this game just that much more dyna dynamic and like i said it, this is in my opinion one of if not the best game period full sentence stop and it's because of the mod hub the community of people that are involved that make this game so dynamic in every way shape and form absolutely love it like i said I, i'll i'll continue to to sing you know all the praises of the modders map makers everybody out there that that you know brings us the the content that we can enjoy you know again thank you uh, thank you roy so much and thank every single modder map maker out there for doing what you do because without you this game would be you know severely uh, poor as a result. Alright, let me get out to the field real quick and I'll take a look at the chat, see if anything else is updated. There we go. Oh, 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 pause. There we go. Okay, let's see. Um, Roy says, uh, yeah, and Glenn Lathan has one final update with Giants, which also makes the map compatible with the premium DLC fill types. Awesome. Uh, also says, I made the map towards the end of FS17. It was originally a small map using only one X to play area, with the other one X being used as background. And at the time, I lost interest in map making. A friend said, if you're if you're going to retire, then do Maypole Justice and let it reach its full potential. So I made the map, used the full 2x area, and held the map off until FS22. Wow, so that was many years into the making. Holy smokes. But you know what? Thank you for, for finishing it and you know putting it out there for us. Because I tell you what, this is... This is this is definitely up there with uh, with my tops, you know. I, I have a couple of you know top ten series, and this has been you know right up there with with all of them. Like I said, the ability to kind of oh I need to turn on automatic drop, the ability to to have everything so modular and so customizable is just absolutely fantastic. And then just the the beautiful landscaping and the uh, the way that the hills just kind of roll on the landscape is just yeah. So anybody who follows my content for for 
any amount of time will know pretty much what it is I look for when it comes to when it comes to maps. Uh, first thing I look for is one, it cannot be flat. I, I'm just not a fan of flat maps whatsoever. Uh, they they tend to bore me very quickly. Um, two, they have to have very unique shaped fields. The more square shaped, quote unquote, worker friendly fields, I tend not to go for. So you know, again, this one's you know in the running for both of those fields. They have to have a you know not necessarily interesting features or anything like that. That's not as important, but they just have to have a, I'll say like a personality to them. And I think this one really kind of gets it like in spades. And what I mean by kind of personality is it has to have something that's uniquely itself. It's, you know, this being, and I've never been to Ireland. I don't know how, you know, close to reality this map is, but the narrow lanes and the fields and just being able to kind of get in and out of, you know, certain areas only in one path, like that to me is, you know, the kind of uniqueness, the kind of uh, personality that I'm referring to. You know, some of the fields here, like over on field 82 there, you only have one way in, one way out. There is no other way in. You either have to be very familiar with the fields, very familiar with the road network to be able to get there, or you do what I do, and I just kind of fly over in the build mode and then just trace the pass back until I can figure out how to get there. Oops, oops, oops. Um, going before it loads. There we go. Let's see. Um, Roy says, no, thank you for playing the map. I make my maps the way I like to play. However, it's more fun seeing other people enjoying your work. It makes it even more enjoyable. It makes these maps. Yes. Yeah, so I, number one, no problem. I am. I'm absolutely thrilled to play it. Um, but I could absolutely see how it would be, you know, more enjoyable to kind of uh, you know see how people interact with your content with uh, with what it is that you're putting out there so yeah I, I can 100% oops and I'm missing everything there we go uh, let's see uh, sorry I got to run but glad I was able to catch you for, uh, for once and if I don't catch you again before you leave for vacation. Hope you have a great... Hey, Roy, thank you so much for stopping in today. I really appreciate it. Hopefully we can get you back on one of these streams uh, sometime in the future. Uh, maybe answer more questions and just hang out in general. I greatly appreciate you, like I said, making this map and just hanging out with us today. You have a great time. Uh, appreciate the you know good one for the vacation. And... Uh, uh, I don't know if you celebrate Thanksgiving, but if uh, if you do, happy Thanksgiving. If you don't, then uh, just have a fantastic day. Oh, there we go. So that is absolutely fantastic. I'm so thrilled that we were able to get Roy on here and you know be able to hang out and you know get a few questions answered. And I am absolutely thrilled and excited to see all the updates come to this map and they're save game compatible so we don't have to worry about missing out on uh on an update that is fantastic i don't know what it is with people <laughs> are you kidding me right now what is up with people today Uh, it's one of the reasons why I want to move. One of the reasons why I just want to get the uh, get out of this area because where I live, I live on a it, it's not technically a through street, but it is kind of so it, it's a it's a road where it leads into a kind of subdivision kind of area, and then the other road leads to uh, you know, like uh, like a main road, 
kind of thing. So in one direction you get to the main road, and in the other direction you get to the kind of subdivision, which you can kind of snake your way through the subdivision and you know make your way out to you know a different part of uh, the neighborhood kind of thing. So it, it gets you out to a main road. You just got to snake through the, the neighborhood kind of thing. And we get people that come by here all the time, just flying through. Like earlier, you heard, you may have heard the engine roaring. That was a crotch rocket rider uh, who just, you know, occasionally rides back and forth. I think he lives in the area and uses this as his own personal racetrack. And then there's another neighbor who's got a really, re it's a really nice car, but it's obnoxiously loud. And unfortunately, right now, my daughter is sleeping. So every single time they decide, you know, hey, we're going to go gun it through the neighborhood kind of thing. It's always like they they know when she's taking a nap or they know when she's asleep. Because they sit there and try and... Uh, they sit there and try and... Just make as much noise as possible. Oop. Uh... I need to take a call just real quick. I apologize. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. My father was trying to call me, so I had to see if he needed anything. He's making the potatoes this year, so he wanted to know what time he needed to have them inside by. I don't know how everybody else uh, does their Thanksgiving or anything like that, but uh, does, any, does everybody else kind of do like an early meal time? Uh, we, we tend to shoot for about 3 o'clock, and that's when, you know, dinner happens. It's like 3, 3.30 is what we're shooting for this year. And I don't know if that's like a just a, an us thing, or is it, you know, fairly traditional that everybody kind of kind of does that? Oh. And, uh, well, it looks like I'm actually going to have to cut this stream short because we just got a uh, guest that showed up. So I am going to have to hop off. I greatly appreciate everybody who's come on to the stream today. Uh, I hope everybody has a fantastic holiday. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. If you celebrate, if you don't, I also hope you have a wonderful day. But... <laughs> And there's the dogs. They see what's going on. So, like I said, have a fantastic day. Oh, let me do my sign-off real quick. I hope you enjoyed the stream. If you did, please show me by liking, sharing, subscribing, following, commenting, doing all the things the algorithms enjoy you doing. It shows you're engaged with the channel and enjoying the content. And that being said, I hope you have a fantastic day, night, evening, wherever you are in the world. Take care.